Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. This is Anthony at Firewalls.com, and today we're going to be discussing aliases. To get to this page, I went to Firewall and Aliases here on the left, and you can see we've already got several created, mostly by default. If you're not familiar with the concept of aliases, it's simply a way of grouping objects together, whether they be hosts, networks, users, etc., and I'll show you a complete list of the options here momentarily. So let's go ahead and add a new alias. We're going to call this one DMZ Access. You can, of course, set a description if you'd like. Next, we'll need to add members. We can do this either individually or by importing a list, which we'll show you after we export our list. So for now, we'll add. Here you can see our first option is to actually add other aliases. And if we check our drop down menu here, you'll see we can add hosts, networks, or even wildcards. And our wildcard can be used to create multiple networks that have a particular octet in common and are generated sequentially. For instance, let's say that all of our sites have a server at 10.10. whatever that network is, dot two. We can go ahead and create a net mask of 255.255 to preserve the tens, dot 252 to create a few networks. 255 again to preserve the two. We'll hit calculate and you can see based on our subnet it created us four networks. We'll go ahead and add this for now. Back to our drop down you can see we also have the option to utilize IPv6 or we can add firewall users. This can come in handy as well if you're Using multiple remote access VPN types for different users, you can still allow them access to a resource all within the same policy. Another thing of note is we can add an FQDN here. So let's say we have a workstation that's named anthony.firewalls.local. Here I'm going to go ahead and export my list. You can see here it saves as a simple text file. You could theoretically use this format to create a list beforehand, but more likely this is going to be if you're exporting from one site to another, or you intend to replace the firewall. As we discussed before, we then have the option to import a list, same way. And you can see when we've already got some members in our list, we can either add the imported members to the end, or replace what we have with the imported list. Of course, as always, we'll have to save. You can see our new alias is shown here. Now we can go into a firewall policy and use our alias to allow SSH to our DMZ. Removing any trusted here, replacing it with our alias. And setting the destination to our optional interfaces, which is our DMZ in this case. We'll save some resources because we obviously don't need geolocation, which we discussed in a previous video. Go ahead and enable logging. And there you have it. We've created a policy that allows access from multiple sources under one convenient name. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for future content. For all your firewall needs, please head to firewalls.com, where as always we remind you to get secure, stay secure. Thank you.